Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Journey with Erica, and we're in Galatians, the sixth chapter. We're going to start with a prayer, and we're going to get started. Lord, well, thank you for today, God. Thank you for a day that we have never made. Thank you for our our new word for today that is going to be a right now word that we need in order to continue to spread your word, God. Um, thank you for the ability and the opportunity to have listeners to listen to the word so that they may have understanding and instruction from you, God. So decrease of Erica, so that God, you will always get the glory, that you will always continue to spread the word how you see fit, God. And God, I ask that the listeners, whatever they're going through, whatever situation they're going through, have faith in you, God, that they will continue to dive into the word and to continue to get what they need from you, God even now or on their own, God. So we say thank you for that moment right now. Let the word be a right now word. Bless this word, God, that it will be all that we need at this very moment. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so like I said, we're in Galatians 6, and um, I'm going to read first verse to the 10th verse, um, but the second verse is our main verse that we're going to focus on today. All right. So dear brothers and sisters, if any another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. So right there and there, mm, that scripture, that first verse is simply saying, for one, I'm a believer. And I see another person as a believer and they have been tempted and they have fell, fallen into sin, a sinful nature, a sinful moment. It is my ability that I can say, you know what, let me help. How do you help? I don't know how you're going to help. God will deliver that to you at that own and perfect time. But it could be simply, oh, I need to pray for that person. Let me go over to that house of that sinful na nature believer because we're all sinful nature believers, y'all. All right. Some of, some of us didn't have the believer part on it. But we're, we we're believers now. And we want to make sure that the believers stay in the, in the, in the family of believers. We don't want them to continue to con continue to have that tempta temptation. And now they don't believe in God anymore. You know? So we want them to keep them in the, in the believer family. So what we're going to do is, yes, we may go over there to pray for them. We may say, hey, you need anything. Hey, let's go talk to the, to the pastor. Some people go talk to the priest. We go talk to the pastor, the minister, you know, to get us help back, you know. But we, we don't want to talk about the person and gossip about the person. And then eventually, guess what? They're not even in the family anymore. And that's the worst thing that we can do is to kick somebody out of the family because they had one moment of temptation. So that first verse is saying, hey, we need to get them back on the right path. You know, maybe they don't know. Ask for forgiveness, repent, confess of your sins, and then God will forgive you. So it's not, it's so hard for human beings to, to actually forgive other human beings. We got some issues, but I mean, God is a forgiving God. So, um, yes, we have sinned. We've all sinned. We've all made mistakes, but that doesn't mean that God is not going to continue to bless you. All right. Continue to forgive you. He's there for you. And he's going to use us to make sure that that person has the right word when they need it to get back on the right path. All right. It also says share each other burdens and in this way, obey the law of Christ. I feel when it says to share each other's burden, um, you're carrying each other's burden. You're helping each other out with the burden. All right. Um, love thy neighbor as thyself. That's one good commandment of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, you know what? Look, think about it. If you're in a burden and everybody else knows about your burden and what you're going through, don't you think you want somebody to help you? Don't you think you want somebody to call you and, and come by your house and say, you know what, what you need, here's what, here's something that I, I thought you could, could use, you know, if I don't have money this week to buy groceries, you know, hopefully somebody else will say, hey, here's a gift card, go, go, go get you something to eat, you know, something good, or here, here's a gift card to Walmart, you know, go get you something good to, you know, you might want a new shirt, you know, something like that. So share each other's burdens. <clears throat> 
lighten the load, you know, lighten the load that somebody else is going through, you know, we all can be, be better with that because, you know, God will always put in our spirit what we need to do. He, he, that's one thing he definitely would do. He will always put in that spirit what we need to do. And uh, whatever God calls you to do and whatever God wants you to do, I want you to move on that moment. Do not wait. Move on that moment, okay? If you think you are too important to help someone, you are not fooling anyone. <laughs> You're only fooling yourself, y'all, okay? God said, plain and simple in this verse, you are not that important. <laughs> when you want somebody to bust your bubbles, God will definitely do that. You know, you are important to God. <clears throat> you may not be important over somebody else's issues. That's that's the difference that we have to understand. We are important to God. Okay, hold on one second. And when we hold on that one second, we will realize our... Our love and our um, aspirations and our image is of God, okay? God is our cover. God is our father. God is our protector. Yes, we're, we're important to God. But when it comes to somebody else that has a situation, we can't say, oh, mm -mm, that's not my level. <laughs> what you mean that's not your level? You're not that important. Whatever they going through, you know that you can go through too, right? All right. So, so that's that's what God wants you to understand is that you're only fooling yourself when you feel like you're better than somebody else. You're not. Their burdens can be your burdens. That's why God wants us to carry the burdens because He wants you to understand that for one, where they are in, in, in on Monday could be you on Friday. So if you help somebody on Monday, guess what? That person on Friday can say, ooh, she needs my help now. Maybe I need to do that. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you because you never know when we're in that situation the same as the other person, okay? Pay careful attention to your own work for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. When I read this scripture the first this morning, First thing that came in my head is this song, this old song that I used to, my mom and dad used to sing it. And I used to sing it, you know, growing up. Sweep around your old front door before you sweep around mine. <laughs> Say, <laughs> I, I took that as mind your business. <laughs> let me do me on my business, okay? Let me let me do my business first before you try to do my business. Or let you do your business first before you try to be in my business. You know, and that's that's pretty much what it is. You if you want someone to look at your job well done, your work that you have for God, you make sure you do it mm, exceptionally well. So when they see it, they may have something to talk about. People want to talk about things about regardless. You ain't nobody new. All right. So I'm not knowing anybody new. I'm always going to be criticized. I, I understand that. But what God is saying right here, make sure that you do a satisfaction of a job well done and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. Because guess what? To have a satisfaction of a job well done, that means you have to continue to work on it. And when you work on your own self, you're going to be too busy to work on you that you can't compare yourself to another person because you still got to improve. We're never perfect. And I don't even think God is really talking about your, your career. I think God is really talking about our soul. When we work on our soul, you know, we got we are sinful every single day. So we continue to work on our sinful nature every single day. We ain't got to worry about somebody else's sinful nature because we still got to work on ours. We just saying, you know. So those four, we each responsible for our own conduct going back to what we said with that one those who are taught the word of god should provide for their teachers sharing all good things with them it's like you want to be a pet not pet peeve it's um teacher's pet you want to tell hey i did this i did this i did this i did this you don't want to do all that and you know try to boast about it you know go to god god is our teacher god jesus is our teacher so we want to make sure that we share all the good things with them well, we don't because they already see it, all right? Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Mm. 
you know, there's so many things in this world that is not, and I can't say it's not the same as the Bible days because it is. It just fine tuned it up and made a new name for it. You know, it's still the same thing as the old days. So, but the thing is, you will harvest what you plant. <clears throat> if you plant evil thoughts, if you plant evil evil things, if you plant um, evil doing, um, whatever you plant that is evil, I guarantee you, you're going to harvest the same thing as evil. Your plants ain't going to do nothing but be evil. Okay? But if you put the work of commitment, satisfaction, love, faith, grace, mercy, I mean long-suffering, patience, um, joy, um, anything else I did not say that is of God, if you continue to plant on that, continue to water with the daily word of Jesus Christ, and you just continue, oh my God, do you know that your reaping, your, your reaping is going to be so powerful in God, you know, you're going to continue to be able to have a little seed of Protection, seed of coverage. You see, God protects what's important to him, okay? So if he sees that you're steadily, I mean, look at Job. Job lost everything, but Job kept the faith of Jesus Christ, kept the faith. He kept the faith. And when he kept the faith, guess what? God continued to bless him. That power of that seed continued to be spread throughout the land that Job lost everything, but Job also gained everything, you know? This, it's just it's just powerful. So make sure that you plant, you, you are going to plant, and whatever you harvest is what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and day. But those who live in please Christ's spirit will harvest everlasting life for the, from the spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. That's it, y'all. It says, don't ever get tired of doing what is good. And with that situation, this is Keep It Real with Erica. <laughs> I put a turn name. Keep It Real with Erica. You know, we, we as human beings, we, we, it's like we live a life for show, constantly, you know, because when we walk out our front door, we get in the car, we drive, whatever, wherever we're going, it's like everybody's going to see us, all right? They see us. They're, they're, they're looking right in our faces, what we have on, how we're dressing, how we're talking, how, how, how we're acting, whatever is the situation, it is going through that everybody's looking at us. We're, we're, we're the show. And that's for everybody. You, When you see someone that is constantly doing the goodness of God to people over and over and over, what do you want to do? You look at that and either you're going to say, hmm, they should have did all that. Or you're going to say, oh, that makes me want to do the same thing. That made me want to go back in my own house and clean up my individual house and get rid of stuff that I know is such a blessing to me, but it can be a blessing to somebody else. And I need to just share it. You know, I got too much of stuff that I can share it with somebody else, you know, or I can go here and buy food for these people because I have too much food at home that I, I ain't hurting so I can I can bless somebody else. You know, it's just it's just something that you see when you see other people doing something that should be like, oh. I want to do something. It may not be the same thing, but I want I want to find something that is going to be right for me. I want to find something that's going to be good that I can spread to somebody else. It's, it's all for a show. However, when you have a show, how are your people going to respond to your show? That you don't have to understand. That's that you don't have to even bother with. But how are you going to respond to everybody else responding? Are you responding by, mm, they say I, somebody else did that, so I don't need to do that. And... That doesn't make a difference. If God put on your heart to do something, you do it. Because if A person already did it, B person already did it, that doesn't mean that C person can't do it either. 
Do you know how many people around this world is doing probably the same thing, but in different aspects, different natures? But they're doing the same thing. That doesn't mean that your your gift can't be given to this particular population of the world right here. Somebody else still needs it. Somebody didn't get it from A and B, but they, they can definitely get it from you. God uses people, but people have to make sure that they can understand that they understand. Even though God uses you, are you receiving from God? That I think that from our perspective, yes, God used people. God used me. I, I understand that. But do I also realize that I need to receive from God? Because I can't be used by God if I can't receive from God. And what I receive from God, that is the show. That is what I'm giving to other people. That is what I'm harvesting to everybody else. That is what I'm trying to plant to everybody else. Because God is just constantly flowing from me. When God starts flowing to me, guess what? It's cut off and it's all about me. That connection has to constantly flow through me. Constantly flow through me. So which means I'm constantly reaching to God and saying, God, what else do you need for me to have? What else do you need for me to do? Come on, give it to me, God. Fill that void. Fill that emptiness. Fill that barrel so I can actually give it to somebody else. You know, and the word says, let's not get tired of doing what is good. You're good. It's not good enough if you stop. You're good enough. It's not good if you stop. You know, if God gave you that gift and you're receiving from God, you're going to be old soul. Yeah, it may get tiring, but your reward in the end is going to be so great. I'm going to be able to live in heaven. I'm going to be able to, to receive all the wonderful songs of praise in my ear. I ain't got to worry about getting up other than to praise God. I don't have to worry about my kids because hopefully my kids are going to be right there in front of me. I ain't got to worry about my parents. They're going to be right there in front of me. I got my whole family with me in heaven. I guess my prayer. It's my prayer that I'm going to be okay. That I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be in heaven. And I'm going to be receiving all that joy, all that love that I gave. Now I'm able to just see it prosper all around me. Just be galloping on the clouds and just living the life of just sorrow free, sick free. You know, I'm going to be just so tired, but I'm not tired. <laughs> I'm just tired of just. This world can be a better place if we just don't give up. Because I guarantee you, your blessing, your blessing is helping somebody. Somebody is, is receiving something. And if you think it's nobody, that's God. If God has to change it, God has to change it. But I guarantee you, your, your blessing in other people is reaching someone. Someone is receiving this word. So I hope I gave you understanding what we harvest, what we plant. We harvest what we plant. So we get what we plant. So plant good seeds, we get good seeds, good growth back. So that's going to end with prayer. We're going to call it a day. We're going to live this life that we're going to continue to do what is good. Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for what you have given us, God. Thank you for the ability to shine bright through you, God, because God, we can't get our light if we don't have you, God. So thank you for giving us that light. Thank you for pouring your blessings in us, God, that wherever, wherever we go, we have the blessings of God upon our life. We have the blessings of God on in our walk, in our step. Every single step that we make is blessed. Every single spoken word that we speak, God, is you blessing us, God. So God, let us speak from the heart. Let us speak from the mind. But let us speak also always through you, Jesus, that you will always get the glory of whatever we do, God. When people see us, they're going to see a bright and shining star. They're going to see that light that's going to project upon everybody and let them realize that we are dealing with a different type of human being. We're dealing with a child of God type of human being and whatever they say, whatever they speak, whatever they criticize, they're only criticizing Jesus. 
And we know people that criticize Jesus, what happened to them, we may never know. But we know what happened to Jesus. He rose up on that third day with all powers in his head. So that power is given to us that we can continue to overcome the lies. We can overcome the injustice. We can overcome the hatred. We can overcome anything that comes our way because we are living through you, God. And we say thank you. Thank you for that step of opportunity. Thank you for that step to continue to show love. Thank you for that step to show kindness, God. And Lord, thank you. Thank you for whatever you have placed in us that we are able to give to other people. We're able to show other people. We're able to express to everybody else that God is still real and he is still blessing people and he is still in the business of praising him, God. We're still in this business of praising God because God, you have done too much for us to stop. We're going to continue to do good unto people because God, you never stop blessing us. And we want to continue that same power. We're going to continue to spread that power to other people that God is still real and that we are blessed and we're going to continue to bless other people so that they can continue to bless other people, God. We want to share this burden with everybody else. We don't want anybody to fall into sinful nature, but we want to uplift them that they continue to come back to God every single time of repentance and come back to God with forgiveness and come back to God on the right path, God, because God, you have done too much for us that we shall run away from you, God. We know how to come home. We know how to come from the Father, God, because we are the lost child. We are the lost human being, God, but we're going to continue to to read upon your word to get that instruction of how to do right in you, God, how to continue to wake up and to glorify you, God. This is never about us. It's always about you and how you are going to get the glory. So, God, we say thank you right now. God, whatever situation is in our life right now, it could be burdens, different situations that we are unknown to God, but God, we know that you are in the midst of it. We know you are already working out that plan. You have already gotten that plan together of how it's going to come through. And we say, God, we're ready for it. We're ready to see it, God, because it will come through if we let lean, not on our own understanding, but always acknowledge your word, God. Always acknowledge who you are. Always acknowledge that, God, you are great, you are good, and you're going to continue to keep us keeping on in your word, God. So, God, let this word do the walk in our lives lives that we will continue to spread the gospel. Continue to let people know who you are, God, and how you are still blessing people, God. So, God, we say we love you. We understand you. We know what our, our, our assignment is, God. Continue to do that, God, in your will, with your strength. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, people. And I say again, I love you. Have a great day.